I wanted to have a quick look at profiles today and looking at poor value areas. Something I mentioned this morning in cable is something that I've mentioned a few times and sort of briefly alluded to what exactly I mean by it. But for similar to what we did going into the end of last year, actually have a look at some of the specifics of it, what the implications are, why you actually get a poor value area and what exactly it means. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I'll give you an example of when something is not a poor value area as well. So do get your questions in if you see anything whilst I'm talking that perhaps you want a little bit more elaboration on, you're just a little bit more interested in, do let me know. Um, so onwards, poor value areas, what are they, what do they mean and how do you trade around them? Right, now with a poor value area the nice thing is they're visually quite obvious. Um, in the sense that what they have is a very clear flat edge. Now, if you're new to profiling, what you would expect is a profile to have a rather bell-shaped um, profile, basically. So it would look very bell-shaped. I'll give you an example in a moment of you know, where where a poor value area is shown and what you can tell by it or the key characteristics of a poor value area is it's very flat edged. Now it's very flat edged in terms of volume, it's very flat edged in terms of TPO. Now what this means is that very limited amounts of time or a very perhaps even amount of time even if not limited has been spent at almost every price. Now this isn't what would indicate a good auction. In a good auction you will find a price at which buyers and sellers are both happy to interact. Now, if you're willing to spend an equal amount of volume or time at every price of the day, then it's not clear which price people prefer to actually trade at. Therefore, this means that you've got a market that's very undecided. It doesn't quite know what exactly it's looking for. And like I say, this shows up very clearly. You get a very flat edge. You could almost draw a rectangle around the profile of a poor value area. That's an indication, like I say, that there is very limited acceptance of value. Um, also, what it means is the auction hasn't finished, meaning that for an acceptance of value, we need to trade in that area and see where people do actually become willing to trade. And I'll give you an example of this actually developing in the DAX from this morning, where value then gets accepted and then you can get a further move. Until value is accepted, the market becomes unsure. And that's why then it will trade within that poor value area until it can find some acceptance. One thing to be clear on, and I'll give you an example of this at the end, is not to confuse a poor value area with a trend day. A trend day will also have a rather flat edged profile, but particularly the volume profile of a trend day will be very different. It will show peaks and troughs in volume, whereas with a poor value area, it's very, very flat and very even all across the board. Trend days have peaks and troughs. Also from a TPO, so the letters point of view, a trend day will have more single prints in it, whereas a poor value area will have numerous single prints, um, numerous prints at every price. So what does this mean implication wise and where you've got a trade? The implication is you don't have a market that knows exactly where it wants to trade. Therefore, it's got no clear reference point within value because the fact every price has been pretty well traded. So you get re reactive or responsive trade from the edges of value, meaning that each time you get to an edge of value, you'd expect at least well on the first touches of each side of value for the market to then react to then you know, from the top of value, sellers will then come in because they don't want to sell it before there, being as there's no clear reference point to do so. Buyers likewise aren't going to want to buy before the value area low because again, there's no reference in terms of value there either. So you'll get the buyers coming in from the bottom, sellers from the top responding to the edges of value, creating reactionary trade initially until then the auction gets tighter and tighter and tighter as sellers come lower, buyers come higher, and this then develops value in a more balanced type area. So let's go and have a quick look at an example of this. And um, I'll use the one from Cable this morning that I pointed out on the Monday debrief that are yet to be completed. And that's the other implication as well from a poor value area. That 
a move is yet to complete. If if you trade into that poor value area, we don't know where exactly the market wants to establish value. Here's your poor value area. So you can see the red line at the top is value area high, at the bottom value area low, VPOC down near the lows. Now another quite op quite key characteristic is that the VPOC in terms of volume could be at almost any price. Yes, obviously this is the highest price, but or highest volume traded price. But look at the number of others that have all got relatively high volume. You can draw a line with your sort of cursor straight up and down there, and you're going to tick off quite a few different points. Now, with these poor value areas, it is often comes on a directional day. You'll get quite a wide value area. But what you can see on this day is volume's not wonderful. So the blue line's your average volume for a t specific time period, and we're rarely getting too far above that. Also, you're seeing quite deep pullbacks. Even here, yes, it's not a huge pullback, but on the first breakdown where you'd be looking for this break of this consolidation phase to then develop into a continuation, you don't get it. You get a reversal all the way back, and then the move continues then steadily down not on massively increasing volume as you can see here move falls and then retraces almost entirely before falling once more and then tailing off into the end of the day so you're getting a little bit of lack of conviction you can also see it in terms of delta here as well no huge amount of conviction in the selling and this is what leaves that poor value area so this now should be in the back of your mind that even though we continue lower at some point we're likely to get back into this zone and then to react from either side of value. Now, of course, if you're coming into it from the bottom, your first point to look for a reaction is the bottom side of value. So if you're actually coming into it, then what you're looking for is the market to then hold inside. And you see that just here. I'll show you this on a profile as well in a moment. And that, that idea of the very flat edge profile becomes even more clear. But what you're looking for is once you get inside, then the market's going to hold the bottom of value. We shouldn't be seeing it deviating back out. So now your thought process should be along the lines of, right, we're back inside this poor value area. At some point, we're likely to get to the top. And this is where, if you're a seller, you're going to look for a reaction. This is where you're going to get these responsive sellers coming in, looking to play the market back down. And this is exactly what you get. We got this throughout Tuesday afternoon, consolidation inside value. So we're starting to accept value up here. think we're going to have done quite a bit of volume in this little zone here between 31.60s and 32. So quite a bit of volume put in there. But this move's not yet complete. And this is further indicated by the poor highs. Now, poor highs here are not a symptom of a poor value area. But this could be taken then to be a point where actually you've got a trade opportunity. That a break of these highs, we're still expecting this value area to trade all the way out up to the top. And so you've now got a target. Anything that can get up towards these poor highs, you'd expect to break. You'd expect that to break relatively quickly as well. And that creates this move up, tags the top of value. This is where your responsive selling comes from. And that also indicates the end of a move. You get a big tail up here. And the market drops very quickly back to where it's accepting value. So this now becomes the area within this poor value area that's that's accepted value. You get more volume put in here. If you combine the two together, you will have more volume down here, thus balancing out that area. So that's then showing you that the auction has completed, that people are happy to accept value in here. They've rejected trade higher up and then the move can continue to the downside. If I show you this from a profile point of view, this is what you've got. So here's your poor value area. And like I say, no single prints in this. Very flat edged profile. Yes, you got a little peak of volume down here, but like I say, the numerous points that wouldn't take too much more trade to become the VPOC. So there's your poor value area. We trade lower from there. The next day we trade back up and start to accept value inside. So this was that little zone just here. Value starts to become accepted inside, and this way you're still thinking, right, there's still scope to get towards the top of value. Once you get that breakout, move quickly up, 
tags the top of value this is where the responsive selling comes in and this is one of the few opportunities where you do actually get a chance to have a go at selling the high you can be expecting this responsive selling of course i wouldn't necessarily be looking to leave an offer there but it can be something if you get a very quick shot up to the level it's one that you can be a little bit more confident in playing so you get the short from there back down and then we spend much of the rest of the day consolidating in here before a late breakdown back into these single prints but ultimately this is the main bit of the move and this move back down here shows that value is accepted lower that we've completed the move through this poor value area and then the market can drop lower what i'll do now is we'll move on to the dax from today and it's slightly faster um type move so whereas the pound took a couple of days to actually complete the value area the dax does it very quick and then once it's done its job once it's completed the move through value it then establishes value higher up as you can see and i'll come on to the the sort of sequence of this in a moment and then can actually continue its move higher so in terms of the creation of this poor value area this was the move that we saw on monday and what i've got here is this is a full session dax now ordinarily you wouldn't expect quite so much movement um, early on in the dax we do get a big move pretty high volume on this movement and so initially this is looking potentially like we could have a bit of a trend day markets reacted to news it's dropped heavily it's fallen down to its lows and then it can't stay down there what is quite important here and much like that cable move again delta didn't shift on that move so delta stays very flat and then the market starts to reverse and you get this steady grinding drift back up which takes the market all the way back higher fills in any of the single prints created by this early drop and creates this very flat edge profile you see there's no conviction on the buying on the move up it's all grinding there's a lot of sort of tails chop back and forth back and forth back and forth even when you get up to the highs just completely back and forth up here as well so lack of conviction in the market on the way back up therefore this auction is not yet completed what we then get is Tuesday, very, very stable. Coming into the morning's trade, we then get a gap down once again on another piece of news. But this gap down, gaps down below value, quick drop, and this is on this first red candle just here. As soon as you get back up inside value, so above this red line, that's the bottom of value area here, then we get the move straight the way up towards the top of value and the market peaks right there at the top of value so we trade just above it above the 36 is up towards 46 and backs off tuesday's low tagged as well so another little help there in terms of giving you a reference point to trade from so market gets straight up there and then we start to put in this phase of acceptance and that's this little area here so now that we've reacted both ways we now start looking for where the market finds acceptance do you get sellers continuing to sell or are buyers then going to start deviating higher and create the buying from a higher point rather than from the bottom of value now based on the speed and the conviction to buy it away from these lows this would suggest that actually the buyers are the ones moving higher and particularly showing up then where you get value establishing here you can see this building out of value more volume put in up towards the top of this value area and imagine these two pushed together this would then build out this area here showing acceptance then up there and a much more balanced looking profile still tapering off towards the lows having done this then what this is doing is this is now allowing the market to move higher we've traded this area right we've completed the move up and then the market will auction back and forth accept value and now once accepted the market can then continue its move and that's exactly what we're now seeing throughout the morning or going into the early afternoon so what we've seen there is a slower resolution of a, a poor value area and a much much faster resolution of a poor value area yes the dax one was on news but in terms of its reaction to value both sides you still got the reaction that you would expect from those poor value areas and then both of them once accepted where value is then continue to move on from there so one final thing that i did just want to point out for you is 
the distinction between a poor value area and a trend day, something that could be quite easily confused. Looking here, this is the Bund, and this is from the 3rd of December. What you've got here is, you could argue, a poor value area in the sense that there is very little balance. There's very little sort of building out of TPOs, very little built rounding out of volume either. This volume value area here is not wonderful, but the TPOs are showing some time down here, so you're getting balance. Not at all here in the Bund. You're getting very, very flat edged in terms of volume, very flat edged in terms of TPOs. But the distinction here, peaks and troughs of volume, whereas with the DAX here, very few peaks and troughs. There's no single prints in the TPOs either. Whereas here, peaks and troughs in volume, single prints on the TPOs, indicating that what's happening, and as you can see it here from a five minute chart, that the market pushes higher consolidates for a small period of time push again consolidates push again push again each time it pushes it then shifts and creates value at a slightly higher point or little pockets of value higher and higher this whilst not a very balanced looking day or a very balanced auction is still a strong auction because what it's showing you is that buyers have taken the taken the initiative they've bought They've moved trade higher, they've accepted value very quickly in that area and then pushed and pushed and pushed and are continuing to push. You would then expect the following day to see acceptance of value somewhere towards the top side as further buyers then come in at higher and higher prices, preventing any further drop and then a consolidation of building out of value higher. So that's the distinction between a poor value area and a trend type day. A trend type day doesn't necessarily need to be sort of traded back through. The auction has completed and particularly shows completion when you get another day of consolidation up here. That gives you your completion really um, for a trend type move. So there is a distinction and the very easy distinction is peaks and troughs in volume. Single prints would indicate a trend day, not a poor value area. I hope this has given you a few things to think about. Hopefully it's something that's relatively easy to spot and then start formulating your own ideas around them. Next time you spot one of these poor value areas, have a look at what the reactions are like to either side of value and the ability that once inside value, you can have an expectation of a move to both to each side of value and trade between the two. One last thing also on a trend day, look at the average volume on this for the time period. It's the blue line here. Average volume stays very high throughout the entire day and that also keeps the move going, unlike with poor value area.